I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, you know we've been talking about the spirit of boldness. And, and yesterday I was sharing some thoughts with us, and we're going to be continuing from, from there and, and look into different dimensions of what boldness can do. But before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? With boldness in your hearts, say this with me, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, you know, our theme scripture is in Acts chapter 4. I'll read it again. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are just so wonderful. Acts chapter 4 and verse 29. The disciples of Jesus have been threatened and they came to their own company and they began to pray. When they were threatened, they didn't run away. They, and then they didn't revolt. Please take note of that. They didn't revolt. What did they do? They gathered and they prayed. You see, this is one thing Christians must learn. The power of prayer and believing in the power of prayer. Now, they were warned by the, those in authority not to preach in the name of Jesus again. Like I told you before last week, they could have just assumed the position of, well, um, let's, 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 let's chill. Let's wait and see what God would do. No, they went before the Lord and they said, Lord, see what they have said. Now, let's read that verse 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Hmm? They said, don't preach. They went back to the Lord and says, Lord, we want to obey you. Praise God. And I was telling yesterday, true believers are not disobedient people. They just know who they obey. Now, if, if they are in obedience to God and then you now bring a contrary law, you know, these are things where we apply understanding and knowledge in dealing with spiritual authorities versus dealing with human authority okay if you miss it and and like i was telling you yesterday the apostles of old most you see now i may have been too hard and the things i was saying yesterday and it got you know some people ed edgy you know like oh, why would you say such a thing that you you don't believe the disciples should have died the way they died. Yes, I stand by that. Now, I can tell you this, not because I'm just being emotional. I can tell you this because these are, these are things I have taken before the Lord and over time, you know, sat down. Because, you see, we must be wise in life. And when I mean wise in life, don't just take things at surface value. Okay? One of the things I do as, as an individual now is when i see something when i see an occurrence i want to know why so i'll take time to understand i'll take time to study why am i doing that so i will know i think i've shared with you um on this broadcast before how um many many years ago even before i got married you know how you see you know you just stumble on these things you know someone is sharing a testimony how they got married and they waited for five years some 10 years before they had a child you know and then they were just giving testimony how god came true for them you know, and things like that you know you hear that testimony you go wow god is great wow man he came true for them but you see when you hear those kind of things yes you bless god for the couple you 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 bless god for his miraculous power and the testimony but then also you want to personally examine yourself and your work with God in that light. Okay? Can I do this? Can I wait this long? And you don't have to be married to, to examine these things. All you're trying to do is not take things for granted. It will help you. It will 
help you. I still do it today. When I say a situation, I, I want to analyze that situation and then I ask myself, what is the truth concerning this? So, would God, why would God withhold? Or let's say, because many times people will not admit that God withheld, you know. You remember when we did the, the when we studied, when we looked at Samuel's um, situation, Samuel, Hannah, and then we looked at uh, uh, Jacob, Rachel, and Leah's situation, okay. So, many years ago, I, I looked at this and I said, I said, Lord, you're wonderful, yes, but I don't think I would be able to endure this situation. Now, this is me. I'm not saying people. It's me. And then I began to talk to the Lord. I said, Lord, I have patience. I can be patient. But in this particular situation of childbirth and, and things like that, I, I don't think it's, it's something we should wait till that time to determine. Can we determine it now? Because I don't think my situation will permit that. And during that prayer, now I was fellowshipping with God and I was telling him. During that prayer, and this is not something you kneel down and you pray and then it's one day and you say, Father, me, I cannot do it too. No, no. It's like, Lord, I don't know what happened. Maybe we don't know the details, but sincerely speaking, I want you to guide me so that I don't face this kind of situation. Okay. The Holy Spirit will guide us into all through Jesus. Said. And in, in that process of praying, now I, I can't remember how long it took. I, I, I can't remember that, but I know it's not the same day I began to pray about it. But it was in my heart until I received confirmation from the Lord. The Lord actually spoke to me. You will not have issue with childbearing. Okay? The Lord told me that years before I got married. Now, some of you have heard our testimony, my wife and I, you know, how... Um, we were told just before we got married we were told that my wife would not be able to conceive or the pregnancy would would abort anytime she conceives but guess what we have four children four glorious children today so confirming what god said to me is against what the doctors were saying now why am i bringing this up i was telling you something yesterday so now you, you, you watch the apostles die, all the history and stories of how they all died. Now, if you've been listening to this broadcast, you've even heard me say before that I, I still believe we may need to investigate some of those stories. Let it not be a situation where, because the church was under serious persecution at that time, let it not be a case where somebody was tilting a narrative to put fear on Christians, okay? Yeah, because those things happened. A lot of propaganda. So, uh, we need to do some confirmation of some of these stories, okay? But then, I had to go before the Lord. I said, Lord, I don't understand why people would believe in you. Preach your gospel. Take it to the ends of the air, earth, wherever they could reach. And they preach a Christ that is alive, that came to give life, and they will end up dying in such manner. It's not making sense to me. I don't know what you think, but it doesn't make sense to me. Now, this is me. It doesn't make sense to me. Now, who would I take it to? No man of God can explain that. No, no pastor, no bishop. Even the Pope may not be able to explain that. You know what I mean? Nobody, no human being can explain that to you. So you go to the person who will have the answer. You go to the Lord. And I began to pray about it. I said, Lord, I don't get. So where is my safety as a servant of God? Where is my confidence? What is the guarantee that I will not end that way? And then what is the wisdom in ending that way? Men will talk about passion. But then let's look at it truly. Is that the proper end for a man of passion, for a Christ that came to give life? If Mercedes Benz 
please understand what I'm sharing with you. If Mercedes Benz is advertising, you know, there, there was this period that, that was the talk around um, town. If Mercedes Benz is advertising that this their car can never somersault, that's what they advertise. This is why our car is special. It does not somersault. Okay. Now, an expert driver takes on a Mercedes Benz. He's is glorified around the world as an expert car racer or driver and in his attempt to do stunt he's driving a mercedes-benz and he somersaults and kills him okay now how come the narrative is now wow he died doing his passion Instead of querying how did the Mercedes-Benz somersault when they had advertised that it cannot somersault. Are you getting what I'm sharing with you now? So let's not move the narrative from where it's supposed to be to something else because we, want to, we don't want to accept that their debt was not proper. There is nothing anyone is going to convince me on this. Now, like I was telling you, I went before the Lord and I began to ask him, I said, Lord, why would you allow them to die the way they died? Yes, I said, why would you allow them? That's how I took it to the Lord. Because they are supposed to be protected by you. And the Lord began to open my eyes. Like I said, these things take time. It's not the day you go and pray. So if you don't have patience, Forget it. You can't really walk with the Lord. The day the Lord brings his wisdom to you is the day he chooses, not the day you choose. Okay? You can ask God a question and it will take him one year to answer it. And I've told you this on this broadcast before. It's not as though he didn't answer you. The truth is he began to answer you from the day you asked. But it took one year for you to grow to the place to understand what he is going to say to you. Yes, I've heard that. I've, I've heard the Lord tell me that before also. And the Lord began to open my understanding to see that it's not the Lord. You see, we can have passion. And if we don't comb or if we don't tame our passion, we can also get to the place where our passion becomes destructive. Yes, it becomes destructive. Now, for example, Hebrews talked about it. Say others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, because the mindset is that they may accept a, they may obtain a better resurrection. And that was a mindset. Is it right, or is it wrong? It's something we need to look at. So sometimes when we when we celebrate those who were martyred for Christ. We should be very careful. The zeal, the desire to let everything go for Christ is right. But I believe submitting yourself to death is not the right thing to have done. Why did I say that? Because of what Jesus represents. I don't think that is a good, that kind of end is a good testimony we may try to cover it up we may try to sweep it uh, no no you don't get no 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 if you see a preacher that loves god that does miracles and things like that if you watch him get arrested and you watch them slaughter his neck i don't think you will leave that place joyful and happy that you want to face the same thing. No. You would question. If you understand, the, except you don't understand the gospel. If you understand the gospel, you will question. Yes, you will. So you see, these, these fellows, the disciples, they've received the threat and they did not protest against the people that threatened them. 
They didn't go back to say, listen, they said we should not preach, but we must preach. We must preach. We must preach. I've had this experience. I think I shared it earlier days, or maybe last month or so, earlier days of this, this talking about boldness. If I had not faced these situations, I, I may not um, I may not be able to tell you about this. But as, as young as we were then in our university days, we faced this kind of oppositions where we're threatened. If you, if you continue doing this, we're going to deal with you. We're threatened. By the school authority, we're threatened. But thank God for the wisdom we had then. And thank God. See, that's why I say when we pray about these things, we faced a situation one time when, when one of us was summoned to the school disciplinary panel. We did. But you know, if you, if you watch us from the outside, you think we're being careless. But inside, we knew what we were doing and what our faith was on. Okay? So I remember that experience. One of us was summoned to the, to the school disciplinary panel. And, and he brought the letter to us and said, see, because of um, something the fellowship had done. We had used the place and um, where the school said don't use and so uh, they got to find out that he was because that was his faculty also so they got to find out that he was one of us so because he was one of us they were he was summoned to face the school disciplinary panel so when he brought the letter now we could have ah, i don't know we took time to pray we took time to pray i said lord now, we were doing this because the Lord had already spoken to us. He had me share. Please understand, we, see, we, we take risk, but then they are well calculated risk in the name of Jesus. The Lord had told us that I have given you the keys to all these faculties. We heard from the Lord concerning that. Now, what do we do? Obey the Lord. <laughs> Obey the Lord. And, and so, now the school authorities say, you can't use this place. But God has said, I've given you all those places to use. So, who do we obey? Now, when we are obeying God and we got, get into trouble with the authority, what do we do? So, I, I will never forget. We began to pray and pray and pray. I say, Lord, we, had, we did this because of what you said to us. So now is your time to protect us. And, and guess what? <laughs> I got into my department one day. Okay. I got into my faculty one day. And okay. Because when you tell this testimony sometimes, you don't want to give specific details. So I got into the faculty one day. And one of the 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 staff called me uh, and said ah pastor um your name i saw your fellowship name and um, you're supposed to face someone is supposed to face a panel because of one i said oh, really he said yeah i'm the secretary to the panel i said really he said yeah and then i like so what do we do he said what happened i said this is what happened this is what happened like oh okay he said, well, don't worry, we'll see what we can do. That was the last conversation we ever had concerning that matter. And the panel never sat on that matter till this day. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Now, God has the ability to protect you. But do you know, number one? Number two, do you accept the protection? When we are exercising boldness, we understand fully the protection that covers us. Yes. Because if you don't, and you don't let this thing sleep one moment, you must understand that we trust in the Lord. Number one. Number two, we are doing this thing that the world may see as rebellious. We are doing it in obedience to the command 
the instruction and the wisdom that God has given to us. So we are not reckless. People will think we are reckless, but we are not. Why? Because we know who we have heard from. We know who we obey. We know who will protect us. Our time is up. Praise God. Yeah, because I, I need to tell you these things. So you don't waste your life in the name of serving Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I, I pray that your eyes be opened in these things. Be filled with wisdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.